Hey there everyone, and welcome to another episode of Artificial Ink. I know this is not our normal format. Usually our friend R7 is here to do all the presentation. I honestly feel, didn't feel like writing a script, setting him up, doing all the editing. So today we're just gonna kind of do out of the box, just I'm gonna ramble into the microphone and I'm gonna show you kind of where we're at and where we're going because we came to a strange crossroads um you never know where this game development thing is going to take you and that's the most important part i want to make sure that um all of this stuff that we present on here that you can actually use and so i found a, a use case that i thought ai might actually lend itself nicely to so we got here because i was playing with this tool called road of blood ai this thing is supposed to be able to write code for you. And that's some of the, the, the reason I brought this up because this is some of the, what holds people up is being able to write in some sort of scripting language. Now JavaScript, even though it is, you know, it, the entire internet is made out of, it is a complicated uh, scripting language. So maybe even Rosebud AI is having um, problems with it, but it, I did not get the results that I wanted. So the beauty of the internet though is, Somehow I stumbled down this rabbit hole, found this thing called EV, Easy FPS Editor CE. The CE is this guy Clark has taken over. This is a very old project. This is like early 2000s. Um, what it's designed to do is make these kind of Doom and Wolfenstein 3D, 2.5D shooters, very retro. This is my flavor. This is the stuff that I grew up on. So I am, I, I'm not technically a boomer, but boomer shooters were definitely my first taste of first person shooters and, and video games. So these kind of hold a special place in my heart. So I was, when I saw this, I'm like, hmm, interesting. But what really caught me was how easy it is to get a game up and moving. And that's where we're headed. How can we use these tools to get up and moving without being hindered by code? Um, with, without being, you know, we want, we want to get, we want to get moving and creating as fast as possible. So I got to thinking and they built the first Mortal Kombat games and some of these first arcade games off of just recording and digitizing real footage. So that's where I had my Eureka moment. Before we get there, let me show you what this editor can do and what it looks like. So as soon as you import your textures, you're basically able to paint out a map and you've got a controller set up. You've got a lot of logic already here. As soon as you hit this play button, so I painted this map out. It's just a bunch of textures that are kind of set to this grid pattern. So we're able to, to do to these faux 3D worlds. As you can see, it, this is already set up. You can walk, jump, crouch. I don't, my button's not working. There we go, crouch. Um, getting weapon pickup system. We've got health. All of this is already built into the system. So like we're already off to you know just a rocket uh speed here we've got doors these are already implemented as well you can set these up onto just about anything and it'll turn itself into a door 3d models i'm still struggling with this this is a very old format this is actually built off of something like i think this format was only built for a quake game and then we just went away from it because apparently it wasn't as useful as we thought it was but this is what is super important about this editor is you can edit on the fly. So let's just put some stuff in here. There's a wall. Let's change this floor pattern in front of us. And then this thing is so lightweight that we're right back into the game. No loading, compiling shaders, none of that. Our changes are in real time. Boom, we're back up and moving. All right, let's change all that stuff back. Did I just scan over all this stuff? Yeah, just paint right over it. We should be back to normal. Um, let's throw some enemies in here so you can see kind of that, what I was talking about. These are basically 2D sprites. Let's throw these guys in here. 
Their logic is already set up. Once your sprites are imported. Got all animations, chase, attack, yeah, die. If I can kill one, there we go. There's one dead. Smack this guy. I should really increase the or decrease the health of these guys. Goodness, that dude took so many hits. Um, yeah, we've got a game up and moving. And let's show basically how I uh how I achieved getting our guys into this thing. And the whole thing is speed. That's why we went down the road of AI to begin with. Do, 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 do. So I took an image, something like this, fed it into Tripo 3D, or Rodin, or Meshi, or wherever you want to place your guys at. And this, now this model right here, let's go show the edges. This model right here is trash to try to use in something like Unreal or Unity. It's absolute garbage. But to get Mixamo animations out of this guy and then do something like this, record them in real time with some Mixamo animations. I got some more somewhere here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just recording these guys, doing their actions in real time, taking those and then chopping those into actual frames. And then using these frames like sprites. And if you could zoom in, you could kind of see we gave it that dithering, posturized, old, early 90s feel to them. And then the logic's already set up in here. If we go to enemy settings, go to this murder zombie, and import sprites. They've got all the spaces where we can put and it creates animations from those sprites. So even though, where's he at? This guy sucks for the 3D world. For the 2.5D world, he is absolutely perfect. So this is how I've blended sort of the AI retro FPS into one thing. And just this is just speed, S speed to production. And that's kind of where we're at with this. And that's why this tool has been important. And I'm still testing. I'm going to push it as far as I can push it. And I will report along the way the things that I'm able to create and the things I'm able to do once I get some scripting and some, and hopefully you guys can use this as well to, to make something cool. I mean, if you want to make a boomer FPS, this is a perfect um, entry point. Like I said, you don't have to create, why is that thing acting a fool? You don't have to create something from scratch. There's something kind of, there's already a, a sandbox of stuff set up here for you. And, um, like I said, using AI tools to create your characters so you can get them dropped into your game fast. Um, this seems like a super cool, uh, super quick workflow. Really, really efficient. It is time consuming. All game development is time consuming. And that's the big thing is like, where can we get some of our time back? And this has seemed to me, this seems to be one of the ways to do that. All right. I guess that's it for this one. Um, We'll see if I go back, we'll see how well this video does and whether we go back to the old format and we bring R7 and the boys back. Um, I'm going to be spending a good amount of time trying to actually flesh out a game, something to release that you guys can play um, to show, you know, to show this uh, workflow in progress. Um, so until next time.